Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next The Dawn of Yang Chan chapter analysis video. This one's going to be for chapter 17, which is called Making Ready. So um, this is the chapter where we got the audio excerpt from. A lot of you might not have seen this, but just in terms of the news leading up to the book's release, we did uh, a bunch of weeks ago get a, I think it was only like 30 seconds, but it was from this chapter. So it was our first time having a scene with like Kavik in it ever. Um, and it basically, you know, just covers roughly like the first page. Um, just to be aware of that, that they use this for the audiobook preview. But uh, anyway, this is, I think so far in the book, the longest chapter in the book. And it's definitely one of the better ones because we're obviously now in the southern air, in the northern air temple. Um, and this one is much more about, okay, Yang Chen and Kavak are now working together. So they're being a little bit more open with each other. They trust each other a little bit more. And we see in this chapter, they sort of become a little bit closer as well. And they start to kind of op open up to each other about little bits and pieces. So you get sort of Kavik in a way talking about Kalyan a little bit. You get Yang Chen talking about Jetson to him. And understanding this idea of like that they both effectively had an elder sibling type character in their life who's not really around anymore. So um, that combined with just a lot of other fun little bits and pieces, I think just makes this one of the more enjoyable chapters in the book. So we open up here with basically what I what I sort of brought forward for the into the, the last chapter of you. Um, Kavik asking, were all those people that were just in the hospital from Bin Er? And Yang Chen talking about that, yes, sneaking out of the city without clearance usually means foregoing enough provisions for the uh, or the right knowledge to make it safely to the air temple. And this is why they found all these people, because they haven't been prepared for the journey up in the north mountains, um, like I talked about before. Um, the kind of harsh reality is of the situation comes to a head here, where Kavik clearly would really like to go out and search for the little boy. Uh, who the mother said was still missing, but Yang Chen has to assure him that look, the, the, the abbot and other airbenders will go out there and search. We have our mission to do. Um, and she just tries to get across, you know, you saved someone's life, you have to hold on to the victories and let go of the defeats or else you will never sleep again. So this at this point, she sort of brings him into the Northern Air Temple and he's kind of like, wait, I'm allowed into like a holy place like the Northern Air Temple? And she's just like, you're, you're like an avatar companion now. Of course you're allowed in. You're going to be allowed into a lot of places um, going forward. So that's kind of nice. But to get there, it involves the bison. So she 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 does a, a, a bison whistle herself. So she calls Nujian over. And this is, I suppose, um, Kavik's first time meeting Nujian. So being uh, being this close to a sky bison, he's not used to it because he's he's only encountered Yang Chen like on her own before. So he's like, can, can, can I pet it? And it's like, yeah, 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 go ahead. And so they, they, they hop up on Nujian. And at, the, at this point, he does note that like, oh, that's the name of your bison. Wait, 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 you named your bison Arrow? very creative and she's like i was eight when i named him it's fine it's fine um so um pretty fun stuff here nice reference to the whole yip yip thing of like kavik gets on and is kind of like oh let's have a little bit of conversation here so do you have to say something to get him to go but clearly with yang chen she just like uh, controls uh, the bison with like the reins she doesn't need to say anything so kavik's taken by surprise that they, as they launch off into the air and she, Yang Chen notes how like uh, ecstatic Kavik is flying that he he has like the what is it he specifically says um, uh, this boy had a heart made for the sky so he's pretty comfortable up in the skies um, he's kind of like do a loop but she's like no 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 if you're gonna be a companion you're gonna have to know how to fly the bison yourself and fly properly. And he's super excited about the prospect that eventually he's going to have to, you know, get to fly Nujian. So pretty fun stuff here as they're kind of like bonding more over all of this. Um, but it's at this point they basically arrive at the Northern Air Temple. He sees stuff like the um, the airball court, the, the goalpost for bison polo. 
uh, all these little bits and pieces, uh, re really little fun kind of bits. Um, so they land, they get down, uh, Kavik hops off, for, off first and actually like puts his hand up to try and help Yang Chen down, but like she's an airbender, so she just like hops over him and airbending like uh, helps with her uh, kind of a uh, big jump. But she does say, points for gallantry, gallantry though, though. So, you know, just a little teasing of their, their relationship there. Like if, if you want to go in the shipping direction with them, they're not saying no <laughs> for sure with this. So um, that's quite interesting. Um, and you know, there's some obviously description here of the Northern Air Temple. The idea, like it's it's different than a lot of the other ones, where like the the East and West are more kind of like spread out across a little bit, but they obviously have their own unique aspects. The Southern Air Temple has a few different peaks, whereas the Northern Air Temple is more of just like one peak, one high temple, uh, and it's not as kind of like wide spread out. So, uh, just noting the the kind of differences uh, there. Uh, they go past some of like the architecture. He sees some statues, and he's like, "Will a statue ever be put up of you?" And she's kind of like, "Yeah, after I'm dead, the temples are obligated to to by Avatar tradition. Hopefully, mine will be smaller than those. I don't need anyone staring at my giant head for eternity." So, at this point, there's some uh, visiting uh, nuns from the Eastern Temple walk past. And there's like a nice polite bow like to the avatar and uh, they sort of giggle at, I suppose, uh, Kavik as, as they walk by as well. Just kind of noting that like, oh, the, the, the avatar has to, to deal with people of all different nations. Um, but as they walk by, the girls sort of turn around and are like, um, which way do Westerners go? Down, down, down in like a chant. And Yang Chen turns around and is like... Um, you're seven and ten in my era, east side, least side. And they're just like, gaps closing fast, Avatar. And Kavik's like, what just happened there? <laughs> and she has to be like, oh, airball rivalry. So airball rivalry between the Eastern Temple and the Western Temple. Um, and I'm guessing the interpretation of this is, you know, an Eastern salt for the Westerners, obviously, is that down, 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 bad, but also because their temple goes downwards, it's upside down. Um, but then she fires back that, um, you're seven and ten in my era. So I guess since Yang Chen has been alive, so 17 years, I'm guessing this is it, the 17 matches that has, have been had, and the East have only won seven, but the West have won ten. So <clears throat> the... That that's what she's kind of pointing out there. They have a better record against the East, but gaps closing fast. So clearly, I guess the East has maybe won a few more recently. Again, just airball. We don't really get too much on it. I don't think we've ever seen it properly played. You know, I think Aang and Sokka play a match, but it was just Aang like taking a shot or two. So um, that's all that there really is. Um, there's like a quick note here, just uh, kind of Kavik saying that like, hey. Um, if you drilled a few like holes in like key positions, you could probably get water flowing up here quite nicely. Um, and Yang Chen just kind of points out that the reason we don't do that, you know, like uh, people should know the weight of water. The purpose of life isn't convenience. So that's why they're sort of fine with, I suppose, just bringing up water from <clears throat> below when they need it. And um, just little kind of world building details along the way. Um, she helps uh, a, a, a young air nomad boy who's just kind of cleaning here, like lift water with her water bending, and uh, they move on. Um, she notes that the, the the sunset at the Northern Air Temple is particularly nice looking. And she does say, um, this was the favorite spot of my, and then she forced herself to say it, there was no point in hiding from Jetson's memory. My sister, she first showed it to me. Um, so this will be covered in a, a little bit later on in the chapter. But already, I think just from that, you get the sense for like, okay, as you had maybe been thinking on the previous almost lack of mentions of Jetson. And then I think she got one mention that was kind of like, okay, you're not being very clear about that for someone who's quite close to you. Jetson's memory. So Jetson is dead at this point. So um, it's confirmed later on in the chapter, but you get it there as, as well. So Kavik's kind of like, you have a sister. Is that so odd? And 
Kavik at this point sort of it just comes clean and it's just like um okay th this is the problem there's such a big difference between like up here you and down there you kind of the yang chen he has seen doing things in the hospital all throughout her, his, the time at the temple interacting with everyone else this is the avatar like he expects which is very different than the yang chen he's basically met in bin er and it's just that kind of contrast of the keep the peace, you know, avatar that everyone thinks is the case versus the more realistic and practical Yang Chen of being Er who needs to do all these kind of tactics to get uh, what she needs done. This is when she basically tells the story of Tian Hai Shi. So she, she explains to us in great detail here the aftermath of the events of the Rift comic. So this is where I would definitely say if you have not read the Rift comic, the third Avatar comic trilogy, you should definitely read that um, just so you have full context for what's being talked about here. Um, it's not like hugely like important that you know it off by heart or anything like that, but it just helps to picture a little bit about what's going on here. So Tian Hai Shi, uh, I'll just bring this up here. So this is just a, a panel from the comic. You can see uh, in the comic it was only referred to as uh, many centuries ago, a city stood in this very place, the grandest city of its time. So the deal she makes with Old Iron essentially involves abandoning this city putting the place that it was built on back to nature and how does she deal with that like she made a deal with the spirits but how does she keep that and that's what she has to talk about here of like it's noted in history of just like oh yeah yeah i i know about what happened that like it was something to do with the spirit but more recently people have taken to thinking that it's actually like a storm and she put just points out that like no no it was a spirit and um, you should have seen the battle i was up here me powerful magnificent and um she she does this uh, motion to get across the avatar state to kavik which is just kind of like <laughs> like she basically does that to get across the idea of like the the power uh, i struck a deal with the titan he would lay aside his aggression and human settlers would leave that section of the coast alone my people currently take care of the land where tian hai shi uh, used to be and maintain the proper rituals as part of the agreement so far it's working if there's one thing the four nations respect it's the sacred sites of the air nomad so kavik's like oh cool amazing you solved the crisis but yang chen continues and it basically sort of highlights that the aftermath of that event is what changed her the aftermath of this event is what created down there yang chen bin er yang chen uh, in that she talks about the fight left a city, the city a ruin, homes destroyed, the residents had had nowhere to go, and she she talks about just this idea of like the sheer effort, uh, organization, and the desperate times in the aftermath of this. That to keep that deal, they had to take a great city down. Every single person who lived there had to be relocated somewhere else. And she talks about how the her and a lot of the other air, air nomads worked together, <clears throat> got the, the alms, uh, the, the charity, to keep the people going. And the effort that she had to do in like local towns to try and, uh, you know, get a town to take a few people in. And she talks here about, you know, I would cajole wheedle, whine, use any tactic at my disposal to do what had to be done. Everything became easier once I started playing the game properly, applying leverage in the right situation. In one case, I was able to place most of Tian Hai Shi's craftsmen by lay, uh, lying to two competing nobles about how badly the other wanted to be a patron of so many skilled workers. Had to forge a couple of letters, and so on. Eventually, the people of Tian Hai Shi were absorbed by the continent. We found arable land for some of them to work. Um, others reached family in Ba Sing Se. And she just notes that right now, there are probably some in the Shang cities. And those people might be thinking like, oh, the Avatar might now be failing me twice in terms of having to change so much with Tian Hai Shi. 
and now things are maybe going wrong in say like bin Ur. And so you really see the, the idea of, you know, she says, I learned I can't force people to do the right thing, but I can maneuver them. I can deliver tailored uh, expedient truths that help them to see you from a more enlightened perspective. The airbender term is shaped teachings. So there's uh, that. And, and, and this is um, a very interesting perspective to highlight that. Oh, yeah, like it's one thing to, to see that Yang Chen is sort of crafty in these ways. But it's another to sort of understand like why that happened. And I think it's a very clever use of the rift. The rift showed us the battle, the deal, but left the aftermath up to you until now. And yeah, like potentially the third biggest city in the uh, Earth Kingdom growing for it to completely like disappear. That's a lot of uh, things that you have to do. And this is where she learned to kind of be that way because she had to be that way. As she's mentioned a few times to Kavik already, the things that you think the Avatar can do, just keep the peace, negotiate, they're nowhere near as simple as that. So, um, interesting stuff. Um, then we get to this interesting point where, like, you know, she, she talks about the idea of uh, avatars were often uh, prodigious to some degree, fast learners uh, when properly motivated. Yang Chen had access to so many lives lived to healthy ages. Which of them wouldn't be a practiced deceiver by the time of their deaths? And then the book says this, August Zito alone was a library of intrigue. And it's just left there, the, the final sentence in this paragraph. Now, I'm assuming that that is not trying to say that Avatar Zito's like, first name was August. Um, just because, obviously, August is like real world month name. Um, so I don't think it fits as like a Fire Nation name. I think this is just like a typo or something like that. It feels like it's kind of like an autocorrect error. Where like it's a it's a word that is capitalized beginning with a that is six letters. I think it's just meant to be avatar, but got like auto corrected to August for some reason. And um, so I do think that the sentence is just meant to be avatar Zito alone was a library of intrigue. Um, and Yang Chen after this thinks that like Kavik is going to heavily judge her for like explaining how she became like this, but he just asks. Um, what did your sister think about this? And she's like, well, what? Uh, your older sister, what does she think about uh, how you do things as the Avatar? I assume she's older for some reason. Um, and she's like, uh, I don't know how she'd react to what I'm doing now. Uh, to Yang Chen, her life before and after Jetson were pieces that never meshed. Uh, no joinery possible. She died a while ago before I really started my work. I looked up to her more than anyone in the world. Um, I'm sure she'd tell me to slow down, be less rash, stay focused on the long term. How did you know she was older? And he, he points out that I had someone in my life like that once. But interestingly, he doesn't, he's talking about Kalyan here, but he doesn't say it's his brother. So Yang Chen still doesn't know that there's like another member of this family. Uh, and he never full on says that. Instead, he just says, another errand runner I tried to emulate. Older, smarter. It's as if I keep looking over my shoulder each time I make a decision, uh, waiting to see if they're watching. Um, and this is where they really bond over this idea of um, th them both having these older sibling like characters that they did look up to who aren't around anymore and not having a very respected sort of like hand to guide them anymore in the right direction. Um, Yang Chen says, this friend of yours is gone, very gone. He didn't really have anything keeping him around Bin Er, so he hopped out of the city as soon as he got clearance for himself. Um, and Yang Chen just notes uh, it, in the narration, the two of them must have been close for such bitterness to leak around the edges of his mask. So she doesn't know the full situation there, but obviously Kavik not particularly happy about the way uh, he left. Uh, I suppose you and I are stuck having to decide for ourselves, aren't we? No one to tell us which path to follow. Yes. And she's quite happy to have found someone who understands all of this. Um, so um, she does ask, like, are you having regrets about joining me on this mission? And he's like, no. 
Not if we're going to prevent more situations like the one back at the hospital. And he does go into like details about like how, you know, like if Binner treated his people better, nothing like that would have actually happened. Um, so Yang Chen is happy that he's able to to see the reason, see the cause of that as well, and, and actually understand what kind of needs to be done. And she just says, uh, I think I trust you a little more each time we talk. So very, very nice. At this point, we get the arrival of two more animals. So uh, Pick and Pack arrive on the scene here. Um, and I also have a picture here, again, from the Rift. You can see them here in the uh, top uh, left here, just behind Yang Chen, Pick and Pack. Um, I believe later on in the book, it does clarify which one is which, because I I think it, it specifically refers to one of them by the fact that it has the little bit kind of like... Uh, missing from its ear so we'll get that uh, when we get later on in the book I, I i have to search through the remaining chapters to find out which one's which but um you know we, we will get that later but they are these two bison also there's master boma if you were uh, wondering about him as well as old iron of course damaging tian hai shi here so uh just extra context on the rift if you didn't have it already so they arrive, they're happy to see Yang Chen. Then they, they hop onto um, Kavik and he's shocked by it because it's kind of revealed that their names are pick and pack because they sort of um, pick and pack at people. So they're all over them, sort of like little biting and stuff like that. And he's like taken aback and he's like trying to get them off him. And he throws one of them at the window, um, which will, will be referred to a little bit later on. Um, but um, he's like, those things can fly. And she says, uh, you dropped my lemur out of the tower without knowing it could survive the fall. I defended myself from a horrible little rat beast that attacked me, if that's what you mean. Um, and then we just end the, their little dynamic here with the, I hate you, so I've heard. So that's part of their dynamic at this point. Last little section here is just this idea that um, Kavik is having trouble sleeping that night. Um, and... He he looks at sort of the, the community here with the, the monks and so on um, interacting and it really reminds him of how things were back in the Northern Water Tribe during like the good days and kind of because of that, you know, he's a bit jealous of the dynamic that they have and, and so on. But then he spots that uh, Yang Chen is out at the airball court and he thinks like, oh, she's just there because of the, the kind of airball rivalry that came up earlier on. But no, she's sort of in a way like getting her frustrations out here at night. Um, he thinks she's doing this almost like beautiful kind of airbending dance through the airball court. But then he kind of looks closer and is like, no, for like a, a skill like airbending, for her to like, you know, airbend at the ground so much that she launches herself up into the air. It's quite a, a violent act in a way. Um... And it's just highlighting that, you know, she said at the start of the chapter to him, you have to let go of your defeats. But it's proof that she has problems getting, like, get, letting go of her defeats as well. And again, the idea of the, the boy she kind of doesn't have the time to go after, but she wishes she could. Um, and that, you know, for, for him to see this, that she's not just dismissive of things to focus on the goals she does care but she is just one person and um again there's there's all these kind of little bits and pieces in this chapter of just yang chen respects kavik more kavik respects yang chen more um and after this it says sleep came to him much easier afterwards so um somewhat like lengthy chapter so far i think like 13 pages one of the longest ones so far um a lot going on in this one, uh, start to finish, of course. Um, very important one in terms of just like, okay, they're working together now, that is settled, this is what their dynamic actually is. Um, the Especially them opening up to each other a little bit about like a person close to them. Um, finding out that Jetson is gone, of course, is, is, a, is a major reveal. And you wonder like, how did that happen? Because it said like, she died before I properly started my role. Um, so, you know, we'll have to, to come back to that, of course. Um, there's nothing particularly, like, necessarily hinted at so far just yet about that. Um, but that she is gone. Um, 
from Kavik's perspective, I suppose, he doesn't mention Kalyan by name, um, but it's clearly him he's talking about, but he never really comes clear to clean to Yang Chen about the, the details of that. So that still remains the sort of the the one thing he just has not told her about, like at all, even though it's still somewhat of a goal of his. Um and then yeah, just like fun like little air air, air airbender kind of stuff up here. The airball rivalry is, is very good. Um the 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 story with Tian Hai Shi, I actually really really like that reference um just telling you about the aftermath and that yeah this is what created the yang chen that we have in this it was the aftermath and that the things that she realized that she had to do to properly deal with that situation couldn't just be done by the proper negotiations or anything like that she effectively had to trick people, spy, get key information, plant information, f manipulate people in specific ways to be like, hey, we'll take these people because they're good craftsmen, even though I don't need that many craftsmen. It it shows, again, the, 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 the effort required to actually resolve things, whereas people with that incident only look at it as the, oh, you camped down a spirit, or, oh, you stopped the natural disaster without realizing that damage was still done stuff still had to be resolved in that and this is what actually happened so you know Kavik understanding her a little bit better now as well and why there are kind of two versions of her and why the version he sees as being like representative of the avatar at times isn't the most you know successful necessarily and yang chen just thinking to herself of like do all avatars have to be like this and there's a slight hint there about like zito of like you know well he was very very interesting in that for him to be such a good diplomat negotiator the implication seems to be that um well because you know he was willing to do things like this as well um so yeah, there are there are my thoughts on chapter seventeen, making ready. But uh, in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are. Other than that, that has been the video. Thanks for watching, and bye.